Hey guys, it's Decker here. In today's video, we are building a $2,500 mini gaming PC. This is gonna be the most powerful mini PC I have ever built. And I'm super excited because we're gonna somehow stuff a 4090 in it. Now this whole PC build is actually interesting because I'm trying something new with Facebook Marketplace, but instead of providing a actual product to sell, I'm selling a service where I have people say, hey, I wanna build a PC for this price. I let them build it for this price. I get them all the parts organized. Then of course, they only pay me $100 to actually build it. But what really matters in the long term with this, it's not like the $100 we get from it, cause like, that's cool and all. We want a video out of it. And that's what we got here today. Cause this guy said, hey, I like you to build my uncle's PC. Here are the parts. I'm like, bet, let's get started. So let's get into our specs. Now for our CPU, we're using the i7-10700K. Now this is not a very new CPU. This is a previous generation of Intel CPUs, but it's still very good in today's standard for actually gaming because it has actual eight cores, 16 threads. CPU did cost $236, which honestly is not the worst thing in the world for an eight core CPU. Now it is boost clock is only at 3.8 gigahertz for base and for boost it goes to 5.1 gigahertz. So I'm curious to see how this actual performance mini PC because this is very compact. And of course, for that exact reason, we're gonna be using a liquid IO. For the cooler, we got ourselves the NZXT Kraken 53X. This is a 240 radiator, which will be more than enough to cool our actual CPU and only cost us $135. For our motherboard, we have the MSI B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. That is a tongue twister. But there wasn't a price for this thing that I could find currently because I don't know if they're still manufacturing it. So I'm just gonna assume it's $200. That's what I could find on the internet, just what I could say. Uh, so it's actually pretty good for actually our mini ATX build. And on top of that too, we got our RAM. Now our RAM is actually the G-Skill Trident actual 16 gigabyte kit, which only costs us $48. Now I'm probably gonna be upgrading his uncle's PC RAM from 16 to 32 just because like, why not? You know what I'm saying? If you're building a PC for $2,500, you wanna get that good performance from it. Now for storage, we have two different drives. First of all, we got the Samsung 980 Pro SSD, and this guy has a little heat sink on it too to keep it extra cool, which is two terabytes of actual storage, which costs us $170, which isn't the worst thing in the world. This is honestly the best drive you can get right now besides like the 990 Pro that's currently out right now. But this of course does support Gen 4 speed, so this will be perfect for our board. Not only do we have a two terabyte drive, we also have a one terabyte drive by Inland. This is like like Micro Center's in-brand actual drives. What the hell is going on with my cats? So this is of course like another drive he's gonna have on hand. We're gonna actually use it for its boost drive, even though I'm like telling him he should use this for the boot drive because it's significantly faster. But hey, if you wanna use this, we can use this for the time being. The client knows what's best. And this only costs us a total of $85. So we now have three terabytes of storage. For power supply, we have the Cooler Master V850 gold rated power supply. Now this is an FSX power supply, meaning it's smaller than normal power supplies, which is perfect for actually the case we got because it's gonna fit inside of that. And of course, this will be my first semester one. So I'm really interested to see like how small it is in comparison to a normal power supply but this only costs us $95. For a PC case, you might be wondering where it's at. It's actually this box right here, it's really small. This is the Form T1 V2 PC case. This is a new uh, PC case, it's like mini ITX, and we of course will have to assemble it for ourselves, which is gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be my first time messing with this, so it's like building a Bionicle, which is not fun, so. Hopefully it just goes swimmingly, and this costs $170, so we'll see how fun is this actually build-wise. Now for the GPU, we get the 4090 Founders Edition, which costs $1,600 you can get from Best Buy, which is the best place you can get from really. And of course it's gonna come to build in our PC. I've already started the build process, uh, not gonna lie. This case is a lot tougher than I thought it was. It's like a Bionicle or Gundam where you gotta assemble it. Um, so I might not include that all in post because it's just taking way longer than I anticipated. But this I'm excited about. Let me just give you guys a look how big this GPU is like. Holy moly, she is a beast. That GPU is so ridiculous. Like, here's the size of my hand. Comparing the GPU, absolute monster of actually a piece of hardware. Like, I wanna try to grab it, but I know it's so thick that it's hard for me like, to grab it itself. So here is the GPU in itself. Absolute monster of a GPU. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, but we're definitely gonna fit this in here somehow. And it's just gonna be, a beast. OK, 
Okay, so PC is pretty much built. I just need to double check it to make sure everything boots properly. So that way we good. I push this button and it should just work. Everything's plugged in correctly, which I, I, I know for a fact it is. It should work. So. Maybe I have the power switch wrong. No, I have 100% in. Maybe I just have it in wrong. I know for a fact I plugged into the right headers. All right, let's try it now. I flipped it around just in case. <clears throat> Still nothing. Okay, that is not a good sign. So what I'm gonna do, just in case, I'm gonna take out this extension cable for the motherboard and switch it to the one that came with uh, power supply. Because usually what happens is sometimes these uh, cables can actually be defective. So I think we just have a defective cable. And worst case scenario, we just use this. Uh, and then if this doesn't work, I'm gonna make sure like every piece of hardware is working afterward. Because I'm good. I'm thinking it's either if something is bad or defective, it's probably the power supply or the board. Now the board was already assembled with RAM in the CPU when he handed it to me. So I wouldn't think it would mess up during the process of assembly. Okay, so I switched out the motherboard cable. So if everything works, and I think it was just a defective cable, then we're good. But if it doesn't, then we're in issue. Okay, so it was a defective cable. I thought it was, but I wasn't too entirely sure. I was like assuming for the worst, like, oh frick, the whole board's dead. So let me just do one more test real quick here. So let's see if it boots the GPU now. Good sign. GPU is not doing anything yet. I forgot about the Ryzen cable. Now everything should just work. Oh, there it goes. She's spinning. She's just spinning. It's alive. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to order two of these Arctic Slim fans, which in theory are supposed to be thin enough to actually go in bracket here and replace the two NZXT fans. There's no shot that this is actually working because when I start lining this on up and when I start placing on in, it was so thick because it's uh, the fans pushing out the radio on the bottom. That I can't close the bottom of the case. I can close the top but not the bottom. I'm also gonna order a different cable for this just because like I could close the case with this cable, but it's sus, so I'd rather not. So what I'll do is order this 16 pin cable, which takes like four 16 pins and a quarter, not 16, but eight pins. It's probably one 16 pin. It's an extension cable, which is perfect for all I do. So I'll come back when I have these. So the PC is finally built. I got all the parts assembled inside this case. And this thing is so small, like compared to my normal PC, which you can see behind it, it is like one fifth of its actual size. It's the same size as my actual toaster, which is kind of funny. So yeah, this thing is much more powerful than my toaster by like a hundred fold because of that 4090. So I'm curious to see how it performs now. Okay, so the first game we're testing is Apex Legends. Now I got everything to work on this PC. Uh, first thing I want to say about this PC, though I had to wait like two weeks to actually get all the rest of the components because uh, they had a major power outage with uh, the, what is it, not the cities? But the airlines, like all the computers went down recently. So that really pushed this video back for like a whole week, which is like, oh, so annoying. So I feel so bad for the uh, client. So hopefully everything just works through the PC. I will say though, closing that PC was not fun. Like since it's a mini ITX build, everything is cram packed in there. So I have to make sure like none of the cables are hitting the fans to making sure just everything just, just fits. Uh, so I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there's a little bit of like of it, like showing its insides. Not like it's like, open or anything like that just like it's expanding a little bit just because how much pc components we stuffed into it and i know for a fact i stuffed everything in there properly i did not install anything wrong but just because the radiator that is it's slightly thicker than the other rads so because of that exact fact it is pushing out but it's not causing any problems whatsoever the case isn't breaking we aren't hearing any fancy bangs we're good uh so what we're doing is apex legends first max settings uh of course on high everything's maxed out balls to the walls and I was testing with this a little bit earlier just because of the fact I want to see like how good is Apex Legends because I want to grab a 4090 or a 5090 when they come out, but I don't think 5090 is going to come out until next year. A little bit unfortunate, not the worst thing in the world though, but you can see on max settings all together, we are currently hitting more than 300 FPS or like just 300 FPS on average. Just a, unfortunate that we can't see how much more because the limit for uh, Apex is not 300 FPS, but uh, what's it called? 144, but even if we crank it up to 300, it's not particularly anything too insane. I also have my sense way too high because this is on a different account, but uh, it is working to say the very least. Oh my God, my sense, is, my sense is just like, I do not know how, if I live this, I would be impressed. Oh my God. I can just see, I just probably got him right. I can just completely dip out and have no problem. Also found my crouch key, so I know how to slide. I just realized there's a Maggie behind me. Awesome. So maybe I'll slow down my sense real quick. 
But there we go. Now we got our actual skins better. It's not particularly the fastest thing in the world. But on high settings, this game just runs with no issue whatsoever. Now, when I do set this on low, I'm going to set instead of on low, I'll set it to the optimal settings, which I'm probably going to die right here, which is fine. I'm not low, only two gigs of VRAM. And that's perfect. So with this, this is low settings. We should now just easily average 300 FPS with no issue. And wow, that guy just took a minute to kill me. I think he was just watching me the whole entire time. Well, what you're going to see here is that Apex Legends on the lowest thing possible, it's just going to be completely 300 FPS. No matter the settings, high, low, it actually crushes this game. And this is one of those games that like, if you have it on the high, you'll notice you lose half your FPS. But when you put it on low, you get like half your FPS back. So you get 50% gain. So that's kind of the cool thing about Apex. So you see we are dividing a little bit here and there with the particle effects going on, but we're averaging way more than 260 with this actual GPU, which is sick to see. Now, I did add cooling for this CPU. The cooling for it isn't particularly the best since it's so compact, it's kind of hard for the CPU to breathe. Even with the liquid IO under full pressure and Intel gets really hot, it's at like 80 to 90, uh, not 90 C, but 80 C. The liquid IO is coming in clutch, so keeping it cool. So I just know like Intel CPUs run hot. So I'd be impressed if we're able to just have no issue with this whatsoever. I was more concerned about the GPU since there isn't much room in that case, the breathe that is gonna be super tight, but no. On low, even with an AI, not AI, a blower controller, uh, we are actually near 50 to 40 C. So the next game we're testing is Fortnite. Now, of course, I have Fortnite maxed out for low settings. Like everything is balls to the wall, lowest it can be. So we get the most FPS possible for it. I'm actually kind of curious to see what happens with this. I did do some testing earlier with Fortnite for like Epic settings. And honestly, in Epic, it did not get that much FPS as I thought it would. It only got like around like 120 to like 110. So I'm not entirely sure why like the 4090 was not able to actually like get like more fps from it i was expecting like 240 easy on epic settings for 1080p for this gpu but that is sadly just not the case uh but this time around now i make sure that enable all the best settings for low settings here of course like i showed you earlier so we get more fps from this and you can see we're hitting over 200 fps at times consistently for this actual gpu i'm really curious to see like how it's gonna do like on the other games like the final and stuff like that but let me just see if i can get this kid real quick watch me just die this kid never mind that's an npc that's him oh my god i suck oh somehow i killed him i guess he was running away from an npc or something like that i'm not too entirely sure oh hello come here brother come here boy I'm really hearing like kid where you at I'm so good. Like, here's so much shooting going on. Okay, I was about to say, no shot, bro. I literally just lost my kill because of that. I just realized I'm coming to the realization that I do. Oh, never mind. I'm dip. It's better. Oh, interesting. Okay, so they give you movement a little bit or something like that. It's so far. Oh, this might have been a bad idea. Never mind. I retract all previous statements. There's no fall damage in a car, thankfully. Him. I need ammo. I need this ammo right now. That's what I need. Okay, the gauntlets are pretty good. Bro, just said, let me just shoot the guy in the van who's in the. Never mind. I just. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm such a bad spot. Boom. 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 I thought it was gonna look super cool and kill this kid, but you know, I just died. How did I not get a single piece of ammo? I ran through that whole field. And not a single of those kids had ammo for my AR at all. I don't know how that happened, but okay. The next game we're testing is the finals. Now, I have it set to low. I have actually static for RTX, so it's disabled for the time being. I'm curious to see like how good the FPS will actually be in this game, especially with movement. Movement's a very big thing in this actual game for like how like it actually plays. So it's not bad so far FPS wise. We're hitting like over 150 FPS, no, no issue. 
I was expecting to hit a little bit more than that. And also somebody just threw a Molotov right in my face. So that is fantastic. Where's this kid at who just did that to me? Who just did me dirty like that? Oh my god, they are like in the roof and I just got sniped. I just got absolutely cooked. But yeah, no, the FPS wise is nothing too insane. I thought the finals would be a little bit higher than that just because one, we have RTX disabled and also it's low settings. So we should be getting way more FPS. I was assuming plus 200, but uh, that is unfortunately just not the case with this game. Like it is definitely playable, feels 100% super, super smooth. Uh, and we just came in second place and the game just ended. Fantastic. I love I love this game. So what we'll do is we're just going to crank up the finals to epic settings. And of course, what we're going to do on top of that is then we're going to also enable the RTX too to make it also epic as well. So now we got the finals on epic settings. Okay. So I want to just quickly say this. Wow, this looks really, really good. I, it actually looks super freaking nice right now. Uh, I'm curious to see though, like, if it's going to hit more than 100 FPS. I assume on epic, it's not going to do that good. Same thing with like a Fortnite we tested earlier where it was only like 120 and stuff like that. It was really not that high whatsoever. And I'm not entirely sure like why Epic is so like demanding. I guess it's because like there's so much going on with the game with particle effects, looks and stuff like that. The smallest and I need details. That's why it's like nothing too insane FPS wise. Uh, so I definitely would recommend playing the finals on low settings though if you were actually grind this out whatsoever. I'm trying to get like a few kills before like we go into our next game. No, Heavy, why do you have a freaking flame blow? Are you... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, somehow I'm not dead. Fantastic. Dude, Heavies are so annoying. Why do you get a flame flower for free? And also, like, me, like, damage her, like, one shot. It took it forever to win these games because there's a guy I tried to play. And, of course, the guy had a... What's it called? Why is there a bow? There was a guy. He was on his Xbox. And I'm pretty sure... I don't know if the Xbox is actually a thing or not, but... I can just tell you for a fact that uh, he, he took forever to load in. I'm pretty sure this guy had his own game on his hard drive, though. That's my assumption, at least. Where did this guy with a sniper to go, though, bro? He was like some 360 trick scope kind of stuff. Oh, the cash is blowing me. I was like wondering what's going on. Oh, what the hell? Oh my god, this game looks so good, though. Oh my god. I'm gonna drop on in here. Kill this kid real quick. Never mind, not doing that. And I'm dead. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, I tried. Welcome to Rust. Okay, uh, Rust honestly is going to be really easy to run, especially on this PC. No problems whatsoever running at easy 100 FPS at times. And this is on high settings, by the way. If you're under wondering, these are the settings we are currently using. I'm not expecting it to be like super low with this game just because one, server based game and also it's CPU based. So you can see our CPU is getting utilized pretty good. It's only like 20%. GPU is getting not really utilized either. But our RAM is getting utilized near 14 gigs. And we're hitting over 100 fps and i think the limit for the server is actually 100 to maybe 90 i'm not entirely, entirely sure because some servers have limited fps's but i would say with rust it's able to easily run it with no issue whatsoever and man can i just quickly say rust looks so freaking good bro now let's get into my final thoughts about this actual pc build first of all i just want to say this this thing is an absolute monster it can crush every game we threw at it with no problem whatsoever which is awesome to see and i was more concerned about thermals than anything else when especially when we're gaming in a small build because it's so compact there's so much going on there but that didn't hinder us in any way possible which is sick and with that liquid i in the cpu was keeping it cool so i say thermals were pretty good uh my other thing with this is though uh pc build wise i did not like this experience whatsoever now would i recommend anyone build in the form t1 pc case uh me personally i wouldn't recommend it to anyone because like this thing was a hassle to build i did not enjoy building this whatsoever i thought it was a cool experience it was really 16 everything get in there but i would not recommend anyone actually building this now maybe down the line they'll change into how it's built i just felt like some of the stuff about this case just felt way too tedious to actually set it up but it looks good that and i will give it that it has that really nice minimal look but i don't know if it's actually worth the actual extra cost for it because the big thing with this is is when you get a, uh, one of these mini atx pc cases that they are really clean, really slick. However, usually they have a much more expensive power supply since it's a compact power supply. And then they get some extra cost for the IIO instead of can't go really air cooler. You can go with air cooler, but like it doesn't really make much sense in this case for me at least. And some other stuff for actually like, yeah, just like there's a little caveat to this thing that makes it a little bit more expensive than a normal uh, tower desktop build. But I will say though, this piece is cool nevertheless and that minimal look looks so freaking good if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to smash the like button get subscribed to this for future content and i'll see you in that one tech grant out